And so once I get started here, then there we go. And so with that, I'd like to turn things over to Linda, Linda Sikalski, the Assistant Dean for Academic Enrichment and Retention. Linda. Great, thanks, Matt. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight to hear more about academic enrichment and how to ace your academics. Uh, academic enrichment is made up of the three centers that you see on the slide and the programs also on this slide. And I think as we go through the presentation, you'll find that using the resources offered at Seton Hill is an excellent way to ace your academics. So with that said, let's get started. And so the first center that uh, we're going to talk about is the Academic Achievement Center. And the Academic Achievement Center primarily does four different services for students. The biggest one being the tutoring program. Uh, we consider tutoring a great resource for students on campus. Tutoring is course specific. So that means if you are in Accounting 1, your tutor has taken Accounting 1, they've been recommended by the accounting faculty, and they're able to get very specific with how they're going to tutor for that course. Uh, we also know that tutoring is good for first year courses. So we try to focus on those. We try to help to build the foundation. Uh, so first year students, we've got you covered with a lot of first year classes offering tutoring. Tutoring on our campus is free. You are welcome to use tutoring as often as you would like and for as many courses as you would like. We provide drop-in tutoring and we also provide by appointment tutoring. And all of this information can be found on our website. If you go to My Shoe under Campus Services and you're looking for Academic Achievement Center slash tutoring. On that website, you'll see our tutoring schedule and it will have uh, the name of the course. It will have the tutor who's available. It will have their email address and it will let you know if they are doing drop-in tutoring and or by appointment tutoring. Study strategies and academic counseling. Those are one-on-one -on -one sessions with either myself or Meredith Weber. And we cover things like time management skills, test taking skills, how to map out a plan that'll get you from freshman year to senior year and graduating, maybe a little bit of test anxiety help, um, and just getting organized and mastering all of your classes. And the last service that we offer are some one credit success courses. Some students, you may already have one of our courses on your schedule. It's SGS 098 and it's Mastering College Academics 1. This course is available to any first year student who would like to take it and we cover a variety of study strategies and success skills in that course. I am Linda Sokolsky. Meredith Weber is on the slide as well. And I'm gonna turn it over to Meredith to share some more information. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, like Linda said, my name is Meredith. I'm the Assistant Director for the Academic Achievement Center. And I wanna give the students a little bit of information and also parents, you're welcome to listen into this because you can help encourage your students to use some of these ideas. So one of the things that we like to focus on is to encourage students to try something new. There's gonna be so many things and you're going to get so much information that some of the strategies that you've used to be successful in high school are going to be fantastic and super successful in college. However, you may also wanna try something a little bit different. Your college classes are going to be a little different than high school courses. Your interactions with faculty may be different. So think about taking time to learn a new strategy to study for tests or review your notes in a different way. Read those textbooks, uh, make notes while you're taking, uh, doing the reading. Maybe meet with faculty during their office hours, use the tutoring program. So we want you to be successful and we want you to also be successful in a way that doesn't take up your entire schedule for the week. We want you to have free time, but we want you to also be, you know, getting those A's and B's that you want to go and have in your courses. So try something a little bit different, mix it up. The other reason why I want to poke your brain with this idea is think about this thought. 
when you were in high school, probably 80% of the information that you received is, was going to be in class. And you might have had 20% of the information that you had to learn on your own through readings, doing homework assignments, writing, studying, things like that. I want you to think that the college atmosphere is actually going to be switched. So 20%, more, more like 20% is going to be done in class giving you the information, you taking the notes from the faculty lectures, but a lot of the work, like 80% of it is actually going to be on your time. So while you may only have, you know, two classes or three classes in a day and have the opportunity to have free time in the evening or afternoon, you also need to take into account that some of that free time is going to be required to try something new, do some new strategies. We also want to go and talk about the next idea, which is to create a plan. So I love talking about time management. It's one of my favorite things. It's not everyone's favorite thing, but I like working with students on time management because each of your schedules is going to be different. Each of your interests is going to be different. So we want you to kind of think of creating some kind of action plan for yourself. While you do not have to have a schedule that maps out your hours from you know, 8 a.m. until midnight, that's not necessary. However, you want to create some general type of time management schedule for yourself. Right now, when you were in high school, you most likely had a routine. Every day was going to be something similar to the last, and you functioned well on that routine. When you studied, when you were in class, when you had activities, when you may have worked, we want you to kind of keep that kind of idea because as I said, your classes may not take all day. So you may have a little bit more free time during the day where you didn't before. So think about some general kind of time management strategy. Also think about now you have to prioritize because your due dates are not necessarily going to be every single day, particularly not for classes because your schedule may have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday course. So you don't have necessarily something due on a Tuesday for that particular class. So kind of figure out a prioritization method. What do you want to work on? When are things due that you need to focus heavily on right now? And what's going to be due in a matter of weeks that you can start to work on, but not necessarily take all of your time. Think about a plan for each class. Each course is going to be different. Each type of assignment, you may have a class that is all writing. You may have a class that's all test taking. So you need to figure out what is it going to take for each of your courses to be successful in that specific one. And then generally just think about the semester. Uh, I don't know if in high school, when I was in high school and even in the college setting, it may seem like faculty place the tests the same week for every single class. Well, that's gonna continue with your college lecture because your material is going to come out at such a rapid pace that you're going to be tested, you know, potentially three to four weeks and every three to four weeks. So you're going to want to make a plan of attack just at least to find out when are you going to be busy for each part of the semester. Because if you're having a couple weeks where you have nothing due, you can still do something for your academics and be successful in the meantime before a test, before a paper is going to have an actual due date. So kind of keep some ideas in your mind. Uh, like Linda said, we're available to meet with you. I love working with time management, like I said, so that's something that you can come and meet virtually or in person with. And I will turn it over um, to our next speaker. Hi everyone, my name is Amy Beninati and I'm the director of the Mathematics Enrichment Center, or MEC or MEC for short. The Math Center's primary purpose is to assist you with your math and math related coursework during your time at Seton Hill. So when you hear the word mathematics, my guess is that it creates some emotion or memories. And for a few, these emotions are positive, but for many math is synonymous with anxiety or self doubt. I once saw a quote that stated, math anxiety is defined as an intense lifelong fear of two trains approaching each other at speeds of 60 and 80 miles per hour. That was my math joke. Um, the math uh, center works with all learning styles and levels of mathematical knowledge or backgrounds to, pour, to support those that love tackling difficult math problems and change the mindset of those that still fear the dreaded trains. 
we want you to understand that mistakes are part, part of the learning process. There are multiple approaches to problem solving, and there are many resources to assist you on your math way. The Math Center is a place to collaborate and study with your peers and take advantage of a dedicated workspace for mathematics. The MEC provides academic support to students through the undergraduate peer tutoring program discussed earlier by the Academic Achievement Center. But we provide for mathematics courses, statistics, and several other STEM and business courses. It is important to note that we share one undergraduate tutoring schedule, so it's not up to you to figure out who's in charge of which tutoring service. It's all gonna be found in one location. As mentioned, our tutoring is course specific and our tutors have successfully completed the course. They're familiar with the content. They know the instructor and they know the expectations. The Math Center is also planning for one-on-one -on -one appointments and virtual drop-in sessions for this fall. Our peer tutors will also hold review sessions for courses where our services are heavily utilized. These tend to be our freshman level courses, our 100 level courses. The Math Center also offers co-requisite workshops, which are instructional sessions considered just-in-time remediation to refresh skills while you're currently taking a class. So that means you could review math concepts in a chemistry course or review algebra concepts in a calculus course. Information on tutoring, review sessions, and workshops can be found on the MEC website on the MyShu homepage, along with online resources such as helpful apps, study guides, and just general tips for being successful in your math course. At times, you will also see that information is delivered directly from me by email um, through your instructor or on their Canvas course site, which you will grow quite familiar with. So when considering your best support services for math, I encourage all of you to think back to that Alex math placement assessment and take advantage of the learning modules that were created specifically for you. It wasn't a one and done assessment. These modules are available for an entire year. So even if you aren't taking a math course at this time, Alex is the place to work independently to prepare for your future course. This is especially important if your score indicated underpreparedness for the course you'll eventually take, or if you have a long break before you enroll in a math course. The Math Center also provides enrichment opportunities. Although we will have to adapt to our current circumstances, we hope to continue some of our enrichment activities as much as possible. Um, some of our highlights from last year included our very first integration B for our calculus students to engage in a friendly integral battle, similar to an event first held at MIT. We even rolled in the popcorn machine and we had a small fan club that was at the event as well. Um, that's actually the bottom picture on the slide. Um, other highlights include a mock job interview, supplemental teacher workshops, and even a pumpkin carving design competition. We partnered with a local school district to provide math intervention to elementary and middle school students. And I encourage all of you to take advantage of these opportunities. You do not need to be a math major. You do not need to be a STEM major. If there's something that you wanna do, come in, find out about it, look on our website. I encourage all of you to participate. So finally, how do we ace our academics when it comes to math? My biggest thing to say is math is not a spectator sport. You learn math by doing math. If you're tested on solving problems, then you need to practice solving problems. It's not enough to just look through what the instructor solved or look through homework that you did three weeks ago. And another thing about mathematics in college is instructors often post suggested homework rather than homework that they have to turn in. And here's a helpful tip. Cross off the word suggested and consider it mandatory 
because your exam will reflect problems that you see in that suggested problem set. Um, know that you're not alone. Take advantage of, take that first leap through our virtual door, take that first leap through our actual door. Um, many, many students utilize all of our services. There's no stigma and there's no pressure. Another tip that has been mentioned is to start early. Um, don't wait until things pile up. Don't wait until you dig a hole so deep it's hard to get out. Start before your first exam. It's okay to just review what you know, tell a tutor what you know, and have them just confirm it with you. And I do say check our website often for updates on resources, workshops, and services. We know this is a changing world, and that's where the changes will happen. You will find them on our website. Um, do you participate in extra activities? It's how you meet people. It's how you form study groups, which are very important throughout your time at the university. And also feel free to contact me in the MEC anytime. I will work with you to come up with a plan to any questions that you have or anything that you need to have answered. Um, oh, and one more thing. I also do content, so keep that in mind if you um, have difficulty finding something that works with your tutor. Um, I'm going to pass this on to Kim now in the Writing Center, and thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Amy, um, and welcome. Uh, my name is Kim Panese. I'm the director of the Writing Center, and along with Beth Reinquist, who is our assistant director, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Writing Center and its services and how we help students develop their own writing. Please note that I said we're helping students develop their own writing. We're not going to do it for them. We're not going to fix papers. We don't proofread just in, in, you know, hand me your paper, we'll fix it, and I'll hand it back. Um, we work with you to develop your own writing. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about why that's important and what all we do and how we do it, and a little bit about us. So writing is an important workplace skill. And if you talk, uh, you, you'll see all kinds of reports online. The National Cent Association of Colleges and Employers talks about oral and written communication skills as being one of their key competencies for career readiness. It's a, it's a very important skill. Honestly, you probably aren't going to be out there writing research papers and things, but you are going to have to communicate through writing, especially in this world. You do a lot of emails, you submit reports, those kind of things. So it's really important to develop those writing skills while you're in college, which is going to make you more marketable. Uh, we had a writing consultant a couple of years ago who is, was a science major, stellar sci science major, but she credits getting her job partly to her communication skills and her ability to write because they were looking for that. They told her that. So she had that extra skill that other people didn't have. So I think that's something that you really want to develop that skill now. Okay. Um, Seton Hill is committed to helping you do that. So along with the Writing Center, the writing is built into the curriculum. You all have on your schedule a composition and culture course. That's one of your first courses, writing courses you'll take. But along with that, you'll take another course in your major that's called a writing intensive course that focuses on the writing you will do in your field. It teaches you how to do that writing. It talks about how you will do that particular writing. So again, you're not, not necessarily a research paper. You may be doing a parent handbook. That's a, an assignment that's in the writing intensive course for education. You know, it could be business memos, it could be a financial statement analysis, those kind of things. You know, as you come to college, even if you were a good writer in high school, you're going to be um, encountering more complex writing skills, different types of writing assignments. So I think, you know, learning again, this is what we're here to support, to help you learn and adjust to that kind of thing. Um, you know, you aren't necessarily going to be writing that five paragraph essay ever again, even though that's been drilled into your head for years, probably. Um, I don't know how many of you have been told don't use I in your writing. That changes when you get to college. So there's a lot of things that are different about writing in college versus writing in high school. And it's important for you to work on those skills. Okay. So basically what we do, we'll work with you 
um, in a variety of ways. One of the things we'll do is work with you at all stages of the writing process. So for those of you, I like what I can see the audience, I usually ask like, how many of you say, you know, you have trouble getting started and usually people are raising their hands. So we can work with you in those early stages. We can help you brainstorm, we can help you organize um, all the way up through the final fine tuning. Um, kind of like Amy and I, you know, other people have said, like, there's not a stigma for coming in. We work with all different levels of writers. We certainly, we work with a lot of first year students to, to help with that tran transition, but we work with graduate students. We work with faculty. Um, you know, I've worked a great deal with faculty on things that they're getting submitted. So I think just having that, that critical eye, that feedback, you know, sometimes you're like, I think I know what I'm saying, but you leave out an important point. So we can help point those things out. Um, and as I kind of already touched on, writing in different disciplines is really important too. And again, that's something that is a big change. You may be doing a different citation style that you've never heard of. There's at least, what, four or five different citation styles used currently in classes at Seton Hill, you know, and most of you probably use one, probably MLA. So, you know, when you're working on those different citation styles, you can come in, but other things too, like if you've never done a literature review, um, typically we've worked with, we've tracked over the last several years, typically we work with about a hundred different courses in, in, for people who come in writing center. So, you know, we are all over the place. We work with students in every school from, you know, visual and performing arts through, again, the sciences. It's not just the humanities and English courses that we work with. And again, I already talked a little bit about the different types of compositions, certainly, you know, um, lab reports, business memos, those kind of things. But also, as you start learning to do what's called a multimodal composition, you'll be introduced to that a lot more in your first year writing class that encompasses things like PowerPoints, websites, things like that. We can work with those too. We're not gonna do the technical part, but you still need to think about how things are organized and how, you know, whether you're developing your ideas and things like that. So we can help with those kind of things too. So I'm gonna pass it over to Beth now as our assistant director, and she's gonna talk a little bit more about how we do all this. Thanks, Kim. Uh, again, my name is Beth. I'm the Assistant Director of the Writing Center and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do our services. Our primary service are individualized collaborative sessions. Um, they typically take place one-on-one -on -one between a student and a writing consultant, but um, if a student has a group project assigned, we will work with groups on that project. Um, typically, the consultant has the student read the paper aloud. Um, that's helpful. It helps the student notice patterns and understand how the paper flows. And then this, the consultant and the student work on strategies that help the student develop their writing, um, focusing on areas that the student identifies as wanting to work on. These sessions for the fall will take place both online and face-to-face. -face. Um, we transitioned to some online services in the spring and got really good feedback. Um, that kind of happens in real time, so the student and consultant can see each other as well as see the paper. Um, any face-to-face -face sessions we do in the fall will be done with social distancing in mind. Um, another service we do is workshops. Um, we work in groups with students on common writing issues, uh, and we do have one workshop series specifically for the first year students called Write On. Um, you'll hear more about our sessions and how to schedule sessions, as well as our workshops uh, during a visit with the Writing Center, probably in the first five or six weeks of class. Um, we'll do a virtual visit with the composition and culture classes and most of the first year students have that class on their schedule. That's a writing class. So you'll hear this in more detail then. Um, we also do class visits in various classes. We collaborate with faculty to create workshops um, in which students can work on assignments for that class. So they're actively working on their own writing uh, with Writing Center staff members in class. We also have a website. Um, we do scheduling through the website, but we also have resources that the students can access uh, on various writing topics from writing in different disciplines to the writing process. Uh, the website can be accessed from my shoe under the campus services menu. And that's how we do our services. I can talk a little bit about who we are. 
Uh, we have a team of student writing consultants. They are the primary folks that work with students in individual sessions. Um, they go through extensive training, including mock sessions and ongoing professional development. They are trained to work with students at all levels and in all different disciplines. And in fact, many of our staff come from different disciplines and majors to work in the Writing Center. You may recognize some of their faces in the pictures. Um, most of our writing consultants are really active on campus and some of them are also even resident assistants. If this sounds interesting to you, we are always looking for new writing consultants so you can ask us about recruiting. And if we have one overall takeaway from this, um, we want you to know that our goal in the Writing Center is to encourage students as they develop their writing and help them grow into stronger, more confident writers. If you have any questions about how we do this or what fall will look like, Kim and I will be here at the end of the presentation to answer questions and you'll also see our contact information in the last slide. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Connie Kugel to talk about uh, TRIO SSS and other support programs. Thanks, Beth. I appreciate uh, everybody being here this evening. Uh, my name is Connie Kugel. I'm the director of the Student Support Services Program here at Seton Hill, along with the Opportunity Program, and also uh, a number of individuals on the uh, panel this evening works with the students that are classified as far as CAPS. And we just want to go in just to um, to share with you that as far as again that we're, the support that we provide through these particular programs we are here are individuals that you can count on throughout the entire time that you're here at Seton Hill. The first program that I'd like to go and speak about this evening is as far as the TRIO Student Support Services Program. Um, TRIO Student Support Services is a federally funded program from the U.S. Department of Education um, about 40 years ago, Seton Hill wrote a grant in order to go and to have this particular program on campus. Um, it started as far as back at the time of Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty and trying to give access and also opportunity to, high, high, to higher education for all U.S. citizens. Um, we provide as far as assistance from enrollment to graduation. So again, it's not as far as a one and done or just your freshman year. We're here for that the whole entire time that you're here at Seton Hill to provide you personal and academic support services. Personal academic, we provide um, some of the different benefits of, the, of participating in the program is that we um, are trying to assist the you know, students as far as um, and making sure that they're hitting key times throughout the semester um, and meeting deadlines. So we provide as far as a personal academic coach that is there for you to be able to go again and, and making sure you're meeting deadlines, helping you with going and putting a, a um, tentative schedule together. So that way you can take that to your academic coach and be able, or I should say academic advisor, and be able to go through the process to go into um, secure as far as your classes during registration time. Um, one of the other benefits that we really um, pride ourselves in is that over the 40 years that we've been in, in existing here on the campus is that we have grown a lending library. So the students who are eligible for our program are able to come to our office, request as far as, or to see, request to see if, they, if there is a book that they might need um, because they might not be, have the money to possibly purchase it. Um, so they can go and we, we, they can see if we have it, and if so, then we can go and lend it to them um, on, a, um, on a, a short time basis to be able to go and to keep up with their coursework and to be able to go and make sure that they are succeeding um, throughout all of their courses. Um, we also have as far as some additional funding that we provide to uh, eligible students who are Pell eligible um, and, and are part of the program um, to help as far as bringing down their balance or in some instances possibly even paying off their balance so that they are not able to, you know, not, you know, being, um, you know, deterred from going and happen to uh, not register because they don't have the money to pay uh, down to as far as the thousand um, dollar limit as far as to be able to register. So again, we're trying to go in to help those students um, that are in the neediest of need to be able to make sure that they're going and persisting and going and moving towards graduation. 
There are specific eligibility criteria as far as for this program um, to be met and to be a part of the program. Um, if you are interested as far as in the program, you can always reach out to me um, via my email or as far as stopping by admin 501 uh, to be able to go in to talk a little bit more and also to get an application to see if you're eligible for the program. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and move on to another um, particular program that is tied in with as far as the admissions acceptance, and that's called the Opportunity Program. Uh, the Opportunity Program is a summer bridge program, again, for students who have been classified as the due to their acceptance um, through the admit, an admissions committee, um, you know, acceptance. Um, the, this particular program will be running this year from August 9th through the 13th, and the move-in date for this program is next Sunday, the August 9th. The individuals who participate in this program are um, students who, as far as, again, are classified as opportunity students, which means that during the process, they may have had, you know, as far as, um, you know, a need for as far as some additional assistance academically, or as far as possibly needing some addition, uh, additional help for as far as transitioning to the university. So they come in for a week's course prior to the start of the semester. It is worth two credits. Um, again, we go through different types of sessions that's dealing with as far as the language and as far as what we call shoe lingo, um, as far as terminology that we use here at Seton Hill. And then we also go in and have different types of workshops or as far as sessions that deal with getting you transitioned on your, on your technology, um, the, the possibility of going and just understanding what the lay of the land is, um, and also as far as helping the students to um, have a, as far as a contact um, through our peer mentoring um, program. Um, again, we are just trying to make sure that we're trying to transition that student as smoothly as possible to college life. And again, it's not just as far as academics, but it's also as far as personal transition. So that way that they understand, you know, what is, it is to be about as far as being on a college campus and also as far as going and starting to make friends and as far as to go and to have um, a, a series of people that will help you throughout the time that you're here at Seton Hill. The cost of this particular program is free of charge. So there is no charge for the students who come during this program as far as room and board. And again, they will be going and getting two free credits as far as coming through this program. And again, the students who come through this is as far as already determined through their admissions process. The last program that I'd like to go and speak about this evening is as far as the collegiate academic and personal success. So this is again an, an additional um, you know, classification from the admissions committee as far as students that are also needing assistance throughout their time at Seton Hill as far as transitioning. So these individuals come into this, the freshman semester um, with as far as um, going and having to take uh, a Master in College Academics class, which is uh, GS098. Um, and they will be going through the process as far as, as Mrs. Sokolsky had said earlier, um, to go in to learn about um, study skills and strategies, and also as far as, again, uh, strategy, uh, transitioning uh, techniques to be able to go and be successful in college. Um, Again, as far as uh, they receive as far as an academic coach, just like as far as the opportunity and also the student support services students um, to be able to go and again, help them throughout the time there. It would be their go to person that if you're struggling or, you know, we also have a lot of students who just stop in to say, hey, I'm doing extremely well. I just want to say thank you for all your help and your guidance of how to go about doing this. We're here to go and to be with you throughout the whole entire time. You know, Mrs. Beninati had said earlier as far as that you're not alone in this process. And that is so true about as far as, um, you know, these programs. You, you are definitely not alone and they, you can count on the people that are here to help you throughout this time at Seton Hill. Um, 
we just want to go and be able to go and to provide you at this time as far as our contact information and who is it who again is as far as part of each of the different centers and the programs um, I myself do work not only alone, you know, with all of these ladies, uh, but I also work with an, uh, my administrative assistant, Diane um, Rebinar, who is here to go and to also be a point of contact. And her office is located in 501 Admin also. Um, so at this time, I'd like to go and send it over to Matt for our question and answer um, session. And I'll say too, before we go anywhere, make sure you take a screenshot or a photo of this slide so you have all that contact information there for you. So we do have some questions. Again, I wanna thank all of our presenters today. Thank you for your information. At the moment, I do have a few questions, but please, if any point in time, if you have other questions, please send them directly to me through, uh, through the chat and I will be sure to ask them for our presenters. So our first question that came in uh, was about tutoring. So tutoring drop-in sessions, has there been any changes due to the coronavirus with drop-in sessions? Linda, your mic's off. Okay, let's try that again. Um, I can address that for Academic Achievement Center and then Amy, if you wanna chime in for Math Center um, and Kim and Beth will also answer that for the Writing Center too. Um, so our drop-in sessions for the fall uh, will be occurring virtually for the most part, and we will have some opportunities for students to come in face-to-face. -face. Um, and so all that information will be up on the website, whether it's a virtual drop-in via Zoom or whether it's a face-to-face drop-in. We have um, social distancing happening. We'll make sure tables are far apart. We've got plexiglass dividers. We've got masks. You know, we'll take all the precautions that are necessary um, if we are doing a face-to-face. -face. Uh, and if we are doing face-to-face, -face, it really will just be one-to-one. -one. We're not going to do small groups face-to-face. -face. Uh, we will keep that as a one-to-one. -one. Um, so Amy, do you want to chime in for Mass Center on that? Yes, and we are following the same policies um, that the Academic Achievement Center is following. Um, we too plan to have more virtual drop-in sessions. And if there are face-to-face -face sessions, they will be either one or two people in the room. Um, we have some additional technology in the Math Center that will allow us to share screens from remote locations. And you'll be able to share your work to people in the center. So if we have one tutor in the center, they will still be able to work with you remotely in a group. And Kim or Beth, do you want to chime in for the writing center on that one? Um, sure. Like, so we we typically do uh, appointment slots, like an online appointment scheduling, as much as possible. But um, we are going to offer, you know, some some way of contacting students if they drop in. You know, we're located in the Learning Commons. A lot of times, people are working in the Learning Commons and just walk in. So we will deal with that with whatever way they want. They either we'll do a social distance um, session at the time if somebody's available, or we'll schedule something for them to do at a later time, either virtually or face to face. Um, just so you know, I'm going to take this slide down for a second and put in Amy's email because it's not on here. So I'm going to fix that real quick. So you may have to take another screenshot, but so if you see this screen going a little wonky, that's why. All right, next question. So what if there isn't a tutor for a class I am taking and I would like one? So for the Academic Achievement Center, the uh, tutors, uh, a lot of the tutors will have in place for freshman classes. So you will just need to look at the schedule. If there's a class that you would like assistance in, whether that's the first week of the semester, or that's around midterms, uh, there's a form on our website that you can fill out requesting a tutor for that class. Most of our tutors are going to be not just course specific, but a lot of them are also faculty specific. So we will reach out to that individual faculty member and ask, uh, say that a tutor has been requested and would they recommend a tutor to place for the course. Some faculty will actually just reach back out, uh, you know, say send the, the student to, uh, to me specifically as the faculty 
faculty member. And in that case, we'll provide that information and send them back to the faculty uh, of their course. However, some faculty say, sure, this would be a great person. They're a sophomore, junior, senior, someone that has taken the course before and passed it su successfully. Uh, and we will reach out to the, that individual, try and hire them, train them, and get them on board. That is with the best of intentions to try and access a tutor for every single course that a student would make a request for. However, we, you know, we have to make sure that a student is available to tutor the course, that a faculty member would recommend an individual. So there are a few factors, but there is the ability to make the request and we will do our absolute best uh, to get someone in place so they can begin working as soon as possible that the student would make the request. And we have a similar process <clears throat> in the math center as well. Um, at the, for we provide tutoring for our 100 and most of our 200 level courses. Once our students start to go into those three and 400 level courses, they tend to be our math majors and the mathematics faculty prefer to work with them in their office hours um, or make other appointments. And then also we encourage that um, students collaborate together and by that point they are forming study groups and peer study sessions and they work well together um, but mainly the 100 and 200 level courses will have a tutor in place and as far as writing um, we'll work with ours aren't tied to courses um, you know again we'll work a lot with the first year writing people the composition culture instructors so we know a lot about their assignments but Anybody walks in the door with any writing assignment, and it doesn't even have to be for a class. We've worked on scholarship essays, grad school applications, things like that, too. So if you, if you come in with any kind of a composition, again, at any stage, we, we can work with you. I have one more question on my list, so please, if you have any questions, feel free to send them in after this, and I'll make sure we can ask the group. So if I don't know what to ask a tutor, should I use still use tutoring or do I have to know what topic I want information on? So how prepared do I have to be when I, when I need a tutor? I'm just struggling, but I don't know what to ask. You don't need to come in with a specific topic. The big thing that I would say for any student is if you think you are super comfortable with the material, still go to tutoring. You can go to tutoring and actually teach the tutor what you know so that they can confirm that you're on the right track, that you have the depth of information that you need. So you can go in just with the day's notes and say, you know, I'm not getting whatever was discussed today. Okay, so that's perfect place to go and start. You can go and have the tutor review the information for you and with you. Um, but you can also ask the tutor and say, hey, I just want to make sure I get it and I'm gonna tell you what I think I know, and can you tell me if I'm right? So no preparedness, nothing, you know, bring your notes in, bring whatever information you understand in, uh, but you don't have to come with a, a list of specific questions. If you have those specific questions, great, you can come too. And I would agree with that, and our tutors are trained to kind of walk you backwards as well they'll kind of take you back through your syllabus and see where maybe things got a little confusing. Um, and then also another suggestion is just for, as far as math goes, um, especially around those drop-in session times, work on your homework before those sessions so you do have an idea of what you may know or you may not know, work on them. If we were able to all be together in the space, um, I would suggest even working independently so that when the t if you do have a question, you could reach out to the tutor. It can work the same way virtually. Maybe you don't know until you actually begin doing the work. So kind of start those examples and start those problems and also do it kind of around the drop-in session time. So you can go in and ask a question and then pop back out. And, and again, I'll say the same thing for the writing center. Um, I did say that we don't just proofread, but if you come in and you say like, I just need somebody to proofread my paper, we'll work with you and we'll go through it and see what else is there. Cause that's, I mean, I think that's the terminology people are comfortable with. Um, they don't know what else to say. So yeah, the same thing, come in, we'll, you know, work through it. You know, sometimes it's, it's, you're amazed at some of the things that you even end up talking about that you had no idea what you were gonna come in working for so 
Yeah, we'll, we'll help you. If you have a good idea of what you want to work on, we certainly will work on that. But uh, if you aren't sure, feel free to come in and just say, I don't know what to do. You know, we've had people just like, I'm not a writer. I don't have the writing gene or whatever. But yeah, we, we, can, we can help with that. So Amy, we have a question. So the Alex modules, are they required throughout the school years for grades or how are they implemented? Those are completely voluntary this year. Um, what those modules were are, um, students took their assessment. So every student probably on here took their math assessment. And then the Alex software created these modules based on their results. So each set of learning modules or lessons are adapted to what the student knew and what the student may have forgotten or needs to be refreshed. And Alex is an artificially intelligence based software. So as students work through these learning modules, depending on how they answer, the modules will continually to adapt for them. They are not required as far as a grade goes and they are not required for placement this year. However, they are strongly suggested to do because they will prepare you for your next math course. And you wanna start off knowing the prerequisite knowledge that's required. And the Alex gave you a score that showed if you did, if you achieved a certain score, then you're ready for the course, more or less. Um, and if you scored under that, you definitely wanna work in the learning modules and just reassess for your own purposes so you know that you are confident going in with that information. Other questions? Anyone else have questions to ask? Kim, is there a chance to turn off the slide so we can pull together a group photo? If anyone sure. wants to share their screen, they can go ahead and share their screen. We'll take a group photo like we have for many of our other sessions. There's more smiling faces. I know those faces. How are you all doing? There we go. We were just hiding. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? There you go. Logan's relaxed and having some fun. All right, everyone, three, two, one. There we go. Let's see, any questions come in while we're all looking how pretty we are? <laughs> no questions at this time. Do our presenters have anything then to wrap up and close out for our night? Matt, I would just say that hopefully um, parents and students, you got some good information tonight and you recognize that these are some great resources and they definitely have open doors. They're waiting to see you and they're waiting to give you that assistance so that you can ace your academics. Absolutely, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We trust that you've had your questions addressed, gained some useful information having you feel more prepared for uh, joining us on campus and in a little under two or a little over a little over two weeks two weeks and about two days we'll start students i hope that you enjoyed uh, our 16 virtual orientation sessions that we've been available for you for those of you who completed the path on shine i have emailed you so that i can get your t-shirt size for a very limited edition t-shirt when you arrive to campus for family members if you were not able to join us last night our Vice President of Student Affairs will host an encore presentation of Letting Go tomorrow at 3 p.m. We hope that you can join us. It was a great conversation last night. I know that it'll be another great one tomorrow. Students, within a few days, you will receive an email from me with the next step of your orientation, Welcome Weekend. I will send the Welcome Weekend schedule out in a few days to our students to your Seton Hill email address. Welcome Weekend will kick off officially at 3 p.m. on Friday the 14th. We'll run all day Sunday, all day Saturday. Uh, I believe that you'll, we've put together a pretty great schedule for you. We have some connections class meetings each day of Welcome Weekend. We also have many events for you to be able to meet your fellow classmates. We will take attendance at some of these events and connections class meetings that will count towards your connections grade. For commuters, meals will be provided all of Welcome Weekend. So we will provide meals for you Friday night, all day Saturday and all day Sunday because we wanna make sure that you're here on campus for Welcome Weekend. So get ready for that email from me in a few days. And we did have a question pop in. So does the Writing Center help with finding reliable academic sources or would that be it more to the individual? So when it comes to finding reliable sources for research papers, where can the student go for that? 
So um, we typically don't do that as much as the librarians would do that. Um, the librarians will work with you, several librarians, you can go to them. Um, you will be talking about that. I can tell you a good bit in your composition and culture class too, because that's part of that class, um, doing a research project. Um, possibly, I mean, some of you will probably do that more in the spring. If you have 105 now, you'll probably do that in 106 in the spring. If you have 107 now, you'll do that in the fall. But even, you know, you don't have to wait till spring to find out if you have a research paper in the fall, go see the librarians. Um, and that's something like it does overlap. That's one of the reasons it's good for us to be in the learning commons because we work with the librarians very closely. So sometimes people will come in and work on a paper and we'll say like, do you need more information in here? And they're like, I don't know where to find sources and we'll refer them. So we do a lot of referrals, but that's definitely a library thing. Talk to David, talk to Kelly, talk to Adam. Um, they, they have great resources. They have what are called LibGuides too, that you can find on their website that will talk about like good resources for particular fields too. So I think that's, that's an excellent resource too. Do you anticipate tutoring being more busy uh, due to some classes that would be in person now being online? So do we anticipate any changes in our, in our attendance for, for tutoring from you all? Someone wants to be first in line and they want to make sure they don't miss you all. Yeah, right, right. Um, boy, that, that's a great question. Um, we typically are busier in the fall anyway, and that is because our freshman students know it's a great resource, get a jump start, uh, you know, hit the ground running and, and ace your academics. Um, I don't think we're anticipating anything to the extremes uh, because of the situation that we're in. Um, we're looking at hiring the same number of tutors that we've always hired. Uh, we may have to be a little creative with space. We may have to get a couple extra Zoom accounts. Um, but I, I think we're, we're anticipating a fairly regular fall semester as far as tutoring goes. Yeah, and I would just say, you know, from the Writing Center and from tutoring, don't, like plan ahead. Don't wait till the last minute. Um, I know in the Writing Center, we get very busy probably a couple weeks before the end of the semester when all the papers are due, usually around midterm towards the end of the semester. And we have people that, you know, we, we do have typically like a waiting list kind of thing, but um, it's better if you plan ahead, like make the schedule. Sometimes people say like, well, I knew I had to have something done because I made my appointment in the writing center. So sometimes that's kind of a motivator too. Um, and that will help you kind of plan ahead. Uh, just don't wait till the last minute. It looks like I have one last question here, uh, which, which isn't specific to tutoring at all of this, but still is academic support. So the question around first year students with that transition to college, uh, do we find that our that the transition to college is normally smooth? Do we have uh, success and what's the best way to go about helping with that transition from from high school to college with academics I, jump in. I, I would say ask for help um, you know like like seek out the resources don't don't I think so often particularly with first-year students are like I can do it on my own I don't want to you know I'm a grown-up now I, I don't need help we all need help. I get, I write things and I have other people look at it because it's good to get an objective eye. So I think, I think just, you know, that, that's a key part of the transition. Don't try to do it on your own. You know, there's, a, there's lots of people here to help you and support you. Um, don't be embarrassed to seek that support out. Um, there's a lot of stuff. We, we've talked a lot about transfer. So like, there's a lot of things like, yes, it's not like everything you've learned isn't any good anymore, but yeah, there's stuff that you can apply. It's just a change. Every level you go up in your education, it changes. So, um, you know, we recognize that you don't know it all at this point. That's why you're in college, right? So, you know, use those resources to help you make that adjustment and that transition. And know that we all work together as well. So if you don't know who to ask, just ask somebody because we all know what each other's roles are and we can point you to in the right direction. And I would piggyback to, you may not have as many graded homework assignments right away. So your 
first, I hear a lot from students of, well, let me wait till after the first test, then I'll know if I'm going to do well, or let me wait till after the first writing assignment, and then I'll know what the grade, this, the instructor grades uh, and how they, how they grade. Um, I would encourage you, don't wait. There's a lot of times, you know, K through 12, there's no specific course that you sat down to take that said, this is the way you can study, and this is how you study, and this is how you complete your work. So you can go and learn new strategies all the time uh, because you may not have a due date assignment until three weeks into the semester. Um, it's, it's better, give the services a shot in the first couple of weeks and see what kind of assistance you can go and have. Um, and then the other, I wanna piggyback on that and say, even if you are halfway through the semester or it's before the final exams, just because you've waited until that long, we're still available to help. The Writing Center helps all the way through the semester. Academic Achievement Center helps all the way through the semester. Math Enrichment, all the way through the semester. So don't think that you're also too late for help. So start early, but if you do wait and you find later you need assistance, we're still here. I think I uh, say some of the quick. themes, oh, go ahead, Connie. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say real quick too, is that I, I would also encourage everybody to be open, be open to as far as uh, everything and anything. And that, um, you know, you, when you start the semester, you might start as far as going and having um, it to be as far as your, your, your old study habits, but then you see that it doesn't work for as far as one, one course as it might do might for another. So you may have to go and to figure out what's the next step. And if, you're not sure where to start, you know, approach one of us because we're here to go and to try to go and to help you through that process and make it be, you know, you to find what does work for you. I was going to wrap it up and, and talk about how much of what we've talked about in many of our virtual orientation sessions has about, been about taking initiative. So for many of our students, you could have done something else with this hour. You decided to join us to have this conversation. So for those of you who, again, are wondering when is that right time, you'll find that much of college is about taking the initiative to meet a friend, taking the initiative to join a club or organization, taking the initiative to be able to go to one of these great offices to be able to, to get the services that they have to offer. And so I think at least you've joined us today, and so that's a good first start. When you're on campus, you know we'll be able to, to help you out whenever you're here. And so with that, I think we're doing pretty good. If anyone has anything else, you're more than welcome to stick around. I'll stick around like I normally do. Otherwise, thank you very much to our presenters. Thank you very much for everyone who joined us today. I look forward to seeing you in a few weeks on campus. Have a good night.